Hi friends, welcome to story time. My name is Miss Maureen and I am going to be reading you some stories today. But before we start doing that, why don't we sing a hello song together? So for this hello song, we are going to do a couple of hand movements. When we sing hello, we'll take our hand, our flat hand, and we'll do a little salute. And when we sing friends, we'll take our two fingers, our little friends, and we'll have them just give each other a hug. Okay? Hello, friends. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. It's time to say hello. Good job, guys. Today, we are going to read some books and sing a couple of songs about gardens. Does anyone know what letter garden starts with? G, G, garden. That's right. It starts with the letter G. G is for garden. Do you have a garden at home? If you do, what do you grow inside your garden? And if you don't, what would you grow inside your garden? Would you grow flowers or vegetables? Maybe some fruit? Maybe a little bit of all of them? You could make your imaginary garden look like anything you want it to. Let's learn some American Sign Language, or ASL, to help us talk about gardens. Let's start with garden. Do you remember what letter garden starts with? That's right. The letter G, G, for garden. To make a G in American Sign Language, take your hand, bend your three fingers down so that your pointer and your thumb are sticking out. G, that's the letter G for garden. And if you wanna say garden, take one of your arms, and hold it out in front of you, and then the other one is gonna grow up from behind, like a plant. Garden, good job. How about we learn how to say flower? What letter does flower start with? Hmm. F -f flower. That's right. It starts with the letter F. F is for flower. I made a little bit of a mistake here. I made the letter B instead of the letter F. Um, so this is how you make the F. You take your pointer finger and you touch it to your thumb. To say flower in sign language, you'll take your fingers and pinch them to your thumb. This is our little flower bud. And then just pretend to sniff it under each of your nostrils. Flower, good job. Let's learn one more word. How about vegetable? Do you know what letter v, v, vegetable starts with? It makes a v sound. Hmm. That's right. It starts with the letter V. V for vegetable. In American Sign Language, we make our letter V by holding out our two fingers and spreading them apart. Do you see how it looks like a V? V for vegetable. And the way that you say vegetable in American Sign Language is by taking your V and holding it near your mouth and just turn it vegetable vegetable. Good job. Now you can say garden, flower, and vegetable in American Sign Language. Before we go into our first book, let's sing the alphabet together. If you'd like, you can pat along with me. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. Now I've sung my ABCs. Next time won't you sing with me? Good job, guys. Okay, let's go into our first book about gardens. This one 
is called The Curious Garden. The Curious Garden by Peter Brown. There once was a city without gardens or trees or greenery of any kind. Most people spent their time indoors. As you can imagine, it was a very dreary place. However, there was one boy who loved being outside. Even on drizzly days, when everyone else stayed inside, you could always find Liam happily splashing through his neighborhood. It was on one such morning that Liam made several surprising discoveries. He was wandering around the old railway, as he did from time to time, when he stumbled upon a dark stairwell leading up to the tracks. The railway had stopped working ages ago, and since Liam had always wanted to explore the tracks, there was only one thing for the curious boy to do. You see him at the staircase? Liam ran up the stairs, pushed open the door, and stepped onto the railway. The first thing he saw was a lonely patch of color. Wildflowers and plants were the last things he had expected to find up there. But when he took a closer look, it became clear that the plants were dying. They needed a gardener. Yeah, they don't look too good. Liam may not have been a gardener, but he knew that he could help. So he returned to the railway the very next day and got to work. The flowers nearly drowned and he had a few pruning problems, but the plants patiently waited while Liam found better ways of gardening. As the weeks rolled by, Liam began to feel like a real gardener and the plants began to feel like a real garden. Look much healthier. Most gardens stay in one place, but this was no ordinary garden. With miles of open railway ahead of it, the garden was growing restless. It wanted to explore. The tough little weeds and mosses were the first to move. They popped up farther and farther down the tracks and were closely followed by more delicate plants. Over the next few months, Liam and the Curious Garden explored every corner of the railway. After spending his spring and summer and autumn with the garden, Liam's time on the railway was finally interrupted by winter. Heavy blankets of snow fell on the city that season, and for the first time since he'd become a gardener, Liam could not visit the plants. Hmm. Rather than waste his winter worrying about the garden, Liam spent it preparing for spring. After three cold months, the snow finally began to melt, and Liam rolled his new gardening gear over to the railway. Winter had taken a toll on the garden, but thanks to Liam's planning and his handy new tools, and a little help from the sun, the plants soon awoke from their winter sleep. The garden had always wanted to explore the rest of the city, and that spring, it was finally ready to make its move. Once again, the tough little weeds and mosses set out first. They popped up farther and farther from the railway and were closely followed by the more delicate plants. The garden was especially curious about old, forgotten things.
A few plants popped up where they didn't belong. Others mysteriously popped up all at once. Hmm, I wonder who could have put them there. But the most surprising things that popped up were the new gardeners. Wow, look at all the friends coming out to help. Feel free to pause here. This is a really beautiful page in the book. later, the entire city had blossomed, but of all the new gardens, Liam's favorite was where it all began. And there's Liam, all grown up, still tending his garden. Do you think you can find Liam in this picture? Remember, he's on a tree, and he's got red hair. Hmm, I wonder if you can find it. The end. I have a little activity for us to do. We are going to plant our very own felt garden. Because there are lots of ways that you can have a garden, even if you don't have a nice spot for it outside. Just like Liam found out, gardens want to grow wherever they can but they don't have to grow in the dirt. They can grow in our imagination. They can grow in our stories that we tell and they can grow in the art that we create. So let's make our own little play garden. So first, we need some dirt. Our dirt. Get it all nice and ready for our seeds, our tulip bulbs. Let's see how many we have. Let's count them as we plant them in our dirt. One, two, three, four, and five. Good job. Hmm, what do our seeds need to grow into nice, beautiful flowers. Yes, they need the sun and they need some water. So let's help them along with our handy little watering can. Sprinkle, sprinkle, sprinkle. I'm gonna help them get nice and tall and strong. <laughs> I think I see them starting to grow. Our green shoots are popping up. We don't have flowers yet, but when you start to see the green, you know the flowers are close behind. Let's give them a little more water just to help them grow extra tall. Sprinkle, sprinkle, sprinkle. Hmm. Do you see any flowers starting to grow? Hmm. I think I see one. Wow. What color is that flower? Here, I'll hold it up closer for you. That's right, it's a purple flower. Do you think you can tell me the colors of the other flowers that are growing? this one. Our pink flower. So pretty. And what do we have next? Orange. So beautiful and vibrant. So bright and colorful. What about this one? Yellow. Just like the sun. And finally, we have 
our white flower. Beautiful flowers. Can we count how many we have? One, two, three, four, five. Five beautiful flowers in our wonderful imaginary garden. Good job, guys. So you can make a pretty garden wherever you are. And at any time of the year, let's stand up and move around a little bit before we go into our next book. We're going to build a different type of garden using our imagination now. So let's start. Remember, what are the things that we need to get our flowers to grow? Hmm. Sunshine was one of them, right? Let's sing a song about sunshine. Okay, so here are the movements that we're gonna do when we sing our song. We're gonna say, bright sun shining down, shining on the ground. What a pretty face you have. Yellow, big and round. Okay, ready? Bright sun shining down, shining on the ground. What a pretty face you have, yellow, big and round. Good job. Hmm, what else do our flowers need to grow? They have the sun. They need water. Let's give them rain this time. All right. And at the end of this, we're going to give a nice big jump, okay? So get ready. Rain on the rooftops, rain on the trees, rain on the grass, but not on me. Good job. Let's do one more because now we gave our flowers the sun and we gave our flowers the rain. So now we got to have our flowers grow nice and big and tall. So we're going to count all of our flowers. And then at the end, we're going to do a nice big stretch and get as tall as you can. As tall as the tallest sunflowers, as tall as the tallest trees, okay? All right. One little, two little, three little flowers. Four little, five little, six little flowers. Seven little, eight little, nine little flowers. Ten little flowers growing tall. Get up as tall as you can. Be so tall and relax. Good job, guys. You just grew another type of imaginary garden. We have our pretty fat one that we can play with, and we have one that we made with our movements. Our next book is called The Imaginary Garden, just like what we did except the friends in this book do it a little bit differently. This book is by Andrew Larson. Theo loved Papa's old house. She loved Papa's old garden. Papa used to tell Theo all about the different flowers while they sat together under the maple tree. So many colors. Papa's new apartment didn't have a garden. Are you going to put flowers out here on the balcony? asked Theo one day. I think it's too windy for flowers, answered Papa. What about plastic flowers? suggested Theo. We can fill the whole balcony. Hmm, said Papa. Then it would be a plastic garden. I know, said Theo. We could have an imaginary garden. Papa's eyes lit up. Theo and Papa planned their imaginary garden before spring had even come. There they are planning it out. On the first Saturday of spring, Papa bought a great big blank canvas. He also bought a pair of matching gardening hats for himself and Theo. Papa put the canvas out on the balcony. Theo looked at the canvas. What should we do first, she asked. Let's put a stone wall at the back of the garden, answered Papa. 
The vines will need to hold on to something as they reach for the sun. Papa got out his paints. He mixed a bit of white and a bit of black. Together, they made gray. Stroke by stroke, stone by stone, Papa built a wall. It stretched from one side of the garden to the other. Above the stone wall, Theo painted a soft blue sky. Then Papa mixed some green, some red, and some blue. Together they made brown. He spread the paint at the foot of the wall, creating a bed of soil. There, but that's enough work for one day, Papa said. Next time, we'll be ready to do some planting. Papa, I love gardening with you, said Theo. And I love gardening with you, Theo, said Papa. On Monday afternoon, Papa and Theo went back into the garden. The garden is waking up after a long winter, said Papa, as he dipped his brush into the green paint. He painted tiny stems. The first flowers coming up are crocuses, he continued. And look at all the scylla. Ooh, they're getting shoots. Papa dotted the crocus stems with little drops of color, yellow, purple, white. Theo dotted the scylla stems with little drops of color, blue, blue, blue. Papa asked Theo. Papa put a dab of red just above the stone wall. He added a small dab of brown. There was a head. Then he swept around the red with brushes of brown. There was a tail. And there was a wing. Next he made three neat yellow jots. There was a beak. And there were a pair of skinny legs. Then he added a single black dot. There was an eye. It must be spring. A robin has come to visit our garden, said Papa. Look, he's having lunch, added Theo. She painted a tiny pink earthworm in the robin's beak. He's not the only one who's hungry, laughed Papa. Let's get ourselves a snack too. There's their little birdie. A few weeks later, Papa prepared to leave on holiday. He asked Theo to take care of the garden. But Papa, how will I know what to do? Theo worried. She had never gardened by herself before. Well, the tulips and daffodils should blossom while I'm away, said Papa, and the vine should begin to climb the wall. He kissed her on each cheek. Don't fret, Theodora. When you see the garden, you will know just what to do. On Sunday morning, Theo looked into the garden. The crocuses and scylla were gone. The garden was filled with a new growth of stems, and the vines that had begun their climb up the stone wall, and the vines had begun their climb up the stone wall just like Papa said they would. Theo put on her gardening hat and picked up a paintbrush. She knew just what to do. She topped the tulip stems with blooms of color, orange, purple, pink. She topped the daffodil stems with blooms of color, yellow, yellow, yellow. But something was missing. Hmm. Then, Thea remembered. Blue, 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 forget-me-nots, Papa's favorite flower. So pretty. But still, there was something missing. Theo thought and thought. Then, smiling, she added a few dashes to the back of the garden against the gray stone wall. There, she said. 
Theo could hardly wait until Papa returned from his holiday. Do you see what she added? She gave them some chairs so they can sit just like they used to. The End by Papa and Theo. I have one more book for us to read. Um, this one is nonfiction. So it tells us a lot about how gardens work, but it still tells a story at the same time. So it's nice and fun. It's called Up in the Garden, Down in the Dirt by Kate Messner. Up in the garden, I stand and plan, my hands full of seeds and my head full of dreams. Spring shines down to melt the sleepy snow. Wind whistles through last year's plants and mud sucks at my rain boots. It's not quite time, Nana says. Down in the dirt, things need to dry out and warm up. What's down there? I ask. Down in the dirt is a whole busy world of earthworms and insects, digging and building and stirring up soil. They've already, they're already working down in the dirt. Up in the garden, we snap brittle stalks, scoop rusty, rustly armfuls, and wheel away weeds for the chickens. While they squabble and scratch, we spread compost over the soil. Down in the dirt, pill bugs chew through last year's leaves. I give a gentle poke. They roll up tight and hide in plated suits of armor, roly-poly round. Up in the garden, it's time to plant. I trail a furrow with my finger and sprinkle seeds in a careful row. Give them a drink, Nana says. We pat them down to snuggle in the dark. Down in the dirt, a tomato hornworm rests, waiting for wings and the leaves where she'll lay her eggs. Up in the garden, carrot plants sprout, pea blossoms bloom, wasps are on the prowl and honeybees visit, legs loaded with pollen. I weed and wilt in the sun, so strong even Nana looks for shade. Down in the dirt, earthworms tunnel deep. I'm jealous of their cool, damp, dark. Up in the garden, rain shower, Nana turns the hose on me. I hide behind the cucumber vines, but their leaves can't save me. I shiver and laugh, drenched in Nana's rain. Down in the dirt, water soaks deep. Roots drink it in, and a long-legged spider still walks over the stem streams. Mm -hmm. Up in the garden, there's so much to eat. Ladybugs feast on aphids. Nana crunches green beans. I bite a ripe tomato, warm from the sun. Juice dribbles down my chin. Down in the dirt, a robin's beak finds a cricket, a beetle, a grub. Slugs are scrumptious too. Up in the garden, we pick cukes and zucchini harvesting into the dark. Bats swoop through the sunflowers, and I pluck June bugs from the basil until it's time for bed. Down in the dirt, skunks work the night shift. They snuffle and dig and gobble cutworms while I sleep. Up in the garden, Nana's up in the garden, a praying mantis wakes to hunt mosquitoes. Nana sprays away the aphids, and I'm after grasshoppers, ready to swoosh, but snap. Someone else is faster. 
Down in the dirt, a smooth, shining garter snake crunches on supper. Up in the garden, the wind grows cool. Pumpkins blush orange and sunflowers bow to September. Nana ties them together to build a house for reading. Down in the dirt, an orb weaver spins her web, strand by silken strand. She'll munch on moths tonight. Up in the garden, colored leaves litter the squash vines, and we know the cold is coming. Hurry, hurry and harvest. There's enough for the neighbors too. Down in the dirt, the frantic ants gather what we leave behind. They're storing food for cooler days ahead. Up in the garden, frost draws lace on leftover leaves, where secret egg sacs hang, waiting for the warm to return. We say goodbye and spread the winter blankets. Down in the dirt, beetles burrow, ants scurry home, earthworms curl tight in the dark. When Grandpa calls us in for soup, an autumn moon is rising. Up in the garden, dry corn stalks tremble and the wind smells like winter. But the long ripe days of summer still rest in the garden beds. The ladybugs and bumblebees, earthworms and ants are hunkered down, hiding, biding their time. dreaming of sunshine and blossoms and sprouts under the bare arms of trees and the blanketing snow. A whole new garden sleeps down in the dirt. The end. Thank you for joining me for some stories today. I will have more for you next Thursday. If you'd like to sign up for either the preschool, the toddler, or the baby toddler Zoom story times that we also do every week, please email me in the email in the description and I will make sure that a link gets to you. In the meantime, I have a little activity that you can do sometime this week if you want to explore the garden theme a little more or just have a fun thing to do to keep you occupied. That's going to be coming up after this, but first let's just sing a quick little goodbye song. Um, for this one it's really easy. We're just going to wave and then we're going to clap. All right? We wave goodbye like this. We wave goodbye like this. We clap our hands for all our friends and wave goodbye like this. Goodbye friends. All right, so for our craft, we're going to make a pressed flower garden. So I went out into my yard and I picked some little weeds and some flowers and some pieces of grass. And I don't really know if they're gonna press well, but I'm gonna try it, I'll let you know. So what you do is just go outside. If you don't have a yard or if you don't have some wild things growing, you can maybe go on a little walk with a parent or an adult and see if you can find along the way. It is a good idea to go outside with an adult to get the flowers one way or the other because there are some plants out there that can hurt your fingers or make you itch. So after you pick your flowers, come back inside and get something hard. I have my big Harry Potter illustrated book. And if you have a piece of cardboard, you can cut that down with an adult's help and put that on top. I don't, so I just have a piece of um, paper towel, but whether you have cardboard or not, put down a piece of paper towel and lay out your flowers there. And then we're going to put the, another piece of paper towel on top. If you have more cardboard, put that on top and then lay some heavy things on top of it. Okay, so there's my little, little flower sandwich. You can tell I'm a fan of Harry Potter. Um, I might go grab some other things to kind of lay on top just to make it extra heavy. And if you're trying to press flowers professionally, you would probably keep it there for a couple of days until all the moisture is dried out. But we're just doing a little craft, so I'm gonna leave mine for a couple hours and then come back and check on them, and I'll show you what I have. 
While you're waiting for your flowers to press, you can get the rest of your supplies ready. Um, you'll want some paper. I picked white paper, but you can pick colored paper if you like. Um, some markers or crayons or colored pencils and some glue. Okay, so my flowers are pressed. I did end up leaving them overnight because I didn't have supplies at my house anyway. Um, the dandelions didn't really survive, but we're going to put them in the garden regardless. Okay, for the next step, you're just going to want to put some glue down on the paper and press your flowers into the glue. Um, I glued these two down already. And just be gentle because we're trying to keep the flowers pretty. We don't want them to rip, so take your time and arrange your garden however you like. So you can keep it like this if you want with just the flowers and the paper. I'm going to add a couple details with my markers and maybe add some sun, some clouds, some butterflies and bees, whatever you want. And that's it. You'll have your little pressed flower garden.